Hi folks and welcome to Attica Armory. So today we're going to do a real quick video for you to show you how to clean a 22 rimfire single action revolver like this Ruger Wrangler and we're going to be using some of our Attica Armory citrus powered synthetic CLP and I'll show you how we can do this quick, easy and awesome. Anytime you clean any gun at all, the very first thing you want to do is make sure that that gun is unloaded. And we've got our loading gate open and I've checked all of those chambers, so we're in good shape. Now, in order to take the cylinder out, what I've got to do is I got to make sure that I've got that loading gate open and I got to press down right here to pull out the pin. And this is a little tight, but comes out and there's our cylinder and you can see that we've got a pretty fair amount of gunk on there I'm gonna be using some of these thin pre-cut patches uh, I like these thin ones because they tend to work a little bit better on those really narrow 22 rim fires or if you've got something uh, chambered in a 17 uh, even better I also have the wife's mascara brush. Uh, so, you know, I've gotten into this before in cleaning videos. I love this tool. And yes, it's a tool, folks. It's a tool, at least for me. So this works really well for cleaning that cylinder and for cleaning out those chambers. And it also has the other end that you can use to push your patch through. So it's kind of a handy little field cleaning tool. And I always like to recommend it for our folks Folks out there that have access to one of these. Don't tell my wife. Now I'm using this electric toothbrush, but you can just use a regular toothbrush if you want. Uh, these things are quite handy though. And I also have some regular, just thick cotton patches. So the first thing I wanna do is take a nicely soaked patch and I wanna get CLP all over all of the surfaces and let it kind of soak in and work its magic. I'm also going to clean up this ejector rod here a little bit, make sure it's nice and cleaned and lubed up. And I'm going to get the exterior surfaces of this cylinder. And we'll put a little bit on the barrel crown. And we'll just clean up our retaining pin. Next, I'm going to take my mascara brush and I'm going to soak it with some CLP and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of scrub down the inside of the chambers. And I'm actually going through these a couple of times each just so that it gets to soak in a little bit and then I re-scrub. I'm just going to use a little terry cloth here to dry up my brush and I'm just going to leave that to soak for a minute and while that's soaking I'm going to use my toothbrush to clean up the carbon deposits on the frame while I'm still pointing it downward I'm going to actually scrub the back face here as well then I'm going to scrub the exterior surfaces of my cylinder I'm going to take the back side of that mascara brush and use it to push some dry patches through. And basically I'm just flipping it over each one. So each one of these patches is going to take care of two chambers. That one more time because I want the inside of those chambers to be nice and dry. I don't want any extra lube to get in there and kind of saturate the ammo. Um, so we're just going to do two dry patches through each chamber. And you can see how nice and clean it comes out on the second run. And using our terry cloth, I'm just going to finish wiping all the excess off the outside. 
And you can also take a patch and just run it through that center axis just in case there's anything in there. Probably not gonna be much in there, but nah, it's worth it just for the heck of it. So here is our finished cylinder, and you can see that the carbon has been removed, and really the only thing that's left is some of the blast markings that are sort of etched into the surface of the metal. Don't worry about those. Those just tell you that this is a well-worn gun, and it's a happy, happy, happy gun, as uh, Mr. Robertson would say. Also, don't worry about putting any extra CLP anywhere on your cylinder because really all it takes is just the tiniest thin layer of CLP to protect and uh, lubricate this. So right now we've basically wiped off all of the excess. There's a tiny microscopic layer on there and that's all it takes. Now, let me talk to you about the barrel for a minute. I generally don't like to clean my 22 rimfire or really any rimfire barrel almost ever. The only thing I do is I'll run a bore snake through it maybe a couple of times after shooting just to get the, the bulk of the gunk out of there. But I've found that actually it's more risky to clean it with a cleaning rod, especially if you're stuck cleaning from the front of the gun back. It's more more risky that you're going to do some damage to the the crown or to uh, the barrel itself then you're actually going to gain in any kind of benefit of having that clean so I would highly recommend you guys just invest in a boar snake for your rim fires and just do that if you do have to clean the barrel you know maybe every now and then you might end up having to clean it you've got to be extremely careful when you're inserting your clean rod into the front. I like to actually place my my hands on the cleaning rod and kind of guide it in there nice and slow like this while I'm kind of pinching it with my fingers to make sure that I don't catch you know one of the edges on that barrel crown and damage that. So for now we'll just do a boar snake and we'll do it one more time. And that's all it takes. And then once again, I'm just gonna take my terry cloth and I'm just gonna dry off all the excess CLP from the exterior surfaces here. And I'm just getting a little bit of the excess off of the, uh, the ejector rod. And I'll take off some of the excess CLP from our retaining pin. Now at this point, the gun is clean and I'm ready to put it back together. So there's one other thing that you can do, and really you only need to do this maybe every thousand rounds or so, not very often, but you can use the precision needle dropper tip that we've got included with these bottles and just drip one drop right down into the action. And just cycle the action a few times to kind of work that in and that'll keep it running nice and smooth. So there you have it, folks. That's all it really takes. You don't need to get too OCD about, you know, getting every single spec out of this thing. These are really quite simple and rugged devices. And, you know, just get out there and dirty it up again. So we hope you enjoyed this video today. Please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again next time at Attica Armory.